Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome back to Dune. I was having so much fun with the Fremen the last time around, I figured why not just do another run since it's pretty quick. And, well, honestly, I was looking really forward to playing with the Atreides because this um, faction really plays quite different from at least the Fremen and, to be honest, from the other ones as well. They can actually peacefully ex annex other uh, villages and trading is a huge factor with this uh, uh, faction as well because they lose no authority from doing so so basically you want to have as many of those uh, up and running as you can and you can really influence the Landrat a lot more than you could with the Fremen as you saw in the last um, few episodes we didn't really do much with that and the Atreides are all about manipulating the Landrat so this is going to be really interesting and really different so let's jump into a game Okay, so just a quick overview of our skills um, at 5k. We'll get some extra uh, Solari production. We should probably always have a positive resolution on us. And even if we don't, well, the negative one will actually boost our military. So that's always going to be very good. Um, this will be very useful in order to get the political victory. And the 2% resource production upon being elected for a positive resolution is going to be really cool as well. I mean, that shouldn't be too hard to get. Now, when it comes to the counselors, Jessica is really good if you can force your will upon other factions. But honestly, I'm not entirely sure we need this, mainly because we can simply trade in order to get what we want. But you do have the non-aggression pact treaty unlocked already. So for a peaceful playthrough, this could be a very solid option, but that's not what I'm going for. I am going for Duncan, which is going to get, get us 10% less authority to annex a village. So that's basically going to be used all the time throughout the entire game. So that's always going to be useful. And well, the relation bonus with the CHS are just a, a nice bonus on top of that. So the second I'm going to go for is Hawat or Tufir or Tufir Hawat, whatever you want to call it. The additional trade on agents can be really good and we're going to have a lot of agents. And well, this the resource production whenever we get targeted by um, any operation from any faction might be very useful as well at least in the last playthrough i was getting targeted all the time so this could be a nice little bonus in terms of production now gurney over here um actually allows us to start with the veteran militia unit as well um could be useful and military units start with more experience both of those are pretty decent but i don't think they necessarily line up with what we want to do with the atreides so we're gonna go for those middle two Look at our nice little base. There's a couple of things I want to notice because the last time we were playing with the Fremen and like I said, these uh, guys really play quite differently from the other race that we played last time. So first of all, um, we ha now have fuel cells and we need those as you can see to fuel our um, flyers but also for any other vehicles that we might have. So we need to take a good look at how many fuel cells we have and that's basically one more resource to manage. Now we also have the Landrat standing, which we didn't last have last time. And basically the higher this is, um, the more we can do with the actual Landrat. So this will be something that we also need to keep an eye on. But uh, once again, considering we want to go for a political victory in this specific playthrough, uh, we'll get to that in a lot of more detail soon anyway. Now we're going to build another Ornithopter. We are also going to queue up a, a Ranger as well as a Trooper. Now, just to quickly show you, um, no, I can't actually show you now. Let's cancel that for a moment. So the trooper gets 10% um, bonus for each from an ally unit. So that's uh, very nice. Just a little bit of buff from having friends, basically. And the ranger actually gets a bonus if it focus fires something down along with its friends. So this is a really interesting thing because focusing down units is a very good strategy anyway. So having a couple of rangers on your team is going to be very useful. But we also need some someone to tank. So that's what the trooper is for. Now, of course, I'm going to go and send my ornithopter to the spice region first. Um, okay. Let's see where the village is. It's going to be over there on the rocks, probably. We're um, on the top again. We have uh, our spice field behind our base. So that's really nice and convenient. And we have no idea where anything else is. So we'll just have to deal with that for the moment. 
Now we're sending our first two units to capture this village, but honestly we could just annex it peacefully, as you can see we have that option, but it will cost 50 influence. Now right now we're not producing a huge amount of influence, so that's not necessarily something I want to do right from the get-go, but um, it's definitely an option that we have and that we will be using a lot more a little while from now. Now we have Deep Desert, like once again quite close to our base, that's a little bit unfortunate. But yeah, we should be fine. Uh, hopefully we'll find some Plascreed over here. And then that could be our second yes, facility. Now uh, let's make sure that we find out what's order. where. Uh, we have the second Ornithopter up and running. Now this battle is actually surprisingly hard. Um, oh, move, 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 move. Or you're going to be eaten. And that's not something we would like to see, of course. Now... Let's see what we have over okay, here. This is go. indeed the Plascrete, so we can just yes, turn sir. these to Order auto back. now and let them do their thing. We shouldn't lose anything, anyone here, so that's good. And that means we can now start taking control of this. Now, as they uh, do their thing and these Ornithopters fly around, uh, remember we want the Plascrete next because this basically helps us build everything in the game. And yeah. Where is the other Ornithopter going? You're going all the way over here. Okay. Let's, let's let's start go. with actually exploring the stuff we have around us. Now, what does this do? Uh, we are going to need agents for this or an Ornithopter to pick up some Plascrete. Could be useful, uh, although we are not really low on Plascrete at the moment. So let's pause there for a moment. Let's make sure we set up a uh, refinery. Um, now, remember that in the last playthrough, the refinery was actually... Uh, called different as well, but it was basically a tent that was placed on the spice and that was it. Now, these guys will actually have um, little engines running up and down. Um, I actually forgot what they're called. Spice harvesters. There we go. And they will attract worms. Um, luckily, you have Ornithopters to handle that problem. But it is something you need to keep an eye on because that can get ugly really quickly. Uh, e either you need to micromanage that or you can just have the ornithopters pick up stuff automatically. Now we have the same base things as we had in the last time. Now this time I don't think we are ne necessarily going to focus on uh, military at all. But we are definitely going to want to get local dialect studies up and running. Because of course that will help us get less authority to annex anything. Um, and we are also definitely going to want to set up an intelligence network because that will actually help us get more influence, get more um, intel and stuff like that. And that is something we're going to focus on a little bit more in this playthrough. Now our harvester is ready and we actually do need to deploy it. Right now I have the auto recall turned off. That means that we manually will have to keep track of things like worms, etc. But yeah. If we don't do that, the harvester will get eaten and then we have a huge giant problem. Um, we are also able to crew this harvester with one more person. So right now it's producing 25 spice. If I put this on auto, it will produce 24. So the one spice is not worth the effort of risking getting, um, <laughs> getting into issues with worms, basically. So we'll just put it on auto recall and accept that we'll slightly be under producing spice compared to what we could in theory do now we have our second village up and running we are going to set down a plascrete facility over here because of course that will boost that by quite a bit and yeah then we'll just have to wait for the next few research to complete now this actually completed a little bit too slow uh could have waited for that i suppose Remember, we can peacefully annex as well, if that's what we want to do. So that is something to keep in mind as well. And in the meanwhile, we should also probably build um, a... Um, um, what you call it? Wind trap here, but we need some more plascrete in order to do that. This has a wind st strength of 6, so that's very convenient in terms of getting some more water. So yeah, th that should give us a nice start. So we just discovered another spice field really close to our main base. It's actually right in the next zone over. And that's definitely something we want to go for. But before we can do so, we're actually going to need some water. And we won't be actually able to build a spice collector over here anyway. 
because we're running low on fuel cells. Luckily, we have this building over here that will actually, or this special um, energy source over here that will actually give us a plus 50% fuel cell factory resource. So um, that is something we will definitely do. We just unlocked our first agent as well, which we are going to put on Arrakis itself. That way we can do the special events on the planet. And as a bonus, we will also be producing some uh, authority production. Now, actually, let me put her back for a moment. So this one has two bonuses. It will actually produce 20% of every resource except for infiltration. And we actually get a 1% global production for Solari as well per infiltration level. So not going to be very impactful just now, but it's uh, bonuses like this that can add up. I remember every single agent that we get gets an additional bonus like that. So yeah, pretty good. Okay, so exciting things are happening. We just got our second agent, which apparently has exactly the same two um, abilities as the other agents. So we might as well just put Farah along with Alula and um, produce some more authority because we want to rapidly expand our sphere of influence. And the reason for that is twofold. Well, we have this spice field over here, but we actually found a third spice field right over here. Now there's a special zone in between as well, which is this one, the Well of Riches, which will actually give us a nice little buff. It's in a zone with six wind strength, so that will give us a lot of water to work with. So all in all, um, pretty good. So once we get this one, we'll start working towards this one. We might grab this one in between, just because there is Plascrete over here, and that's also very useful. But all in all, we have so many good options that I'm not even sure where to start. So, um, so far so good. We s we've seen a Harkonnen Ornithopter flying around, so they're probably somewhere over here. Um, yeah, we'll have to deal with those once we actually find out where they are. Actually, I think we just found them. They're over here, it seems. So that definitely means we want to grab this as soon as we can um, and then defend our borders. To be honest, this positioning is quite fortunate because this means that this area is in the middle of the Harkonnen and us. And that will make it less likely that they are going to attack us directly. Of course, they can just go around. But all in all, it's a nice defensive location as it is. Not entirely sure where everyone else is. So this doesn't necessarily mean we're in a good position. Uh, we actually have the Ornithopter from the Fremen flying around over here as well. So um, we're nowhere near like in a good position just yet. Or a comfortable position, I should say. But we have a pretty good start as far as I can tell so far. And here you see the uh, saving from the worm in action. Um, there was a worm in this area and a vehicle instantly came and picked up the refinery. So yeah, good thing that happened. Now we're going to lose a unit here it seems. And that's quite a shame honestly. But um, we can rebuild that one. It's not going to be too big of a deal. We might actually be able to survive. It's going to be extremely close by the looks of it. Oh, oh we made it. Okay, and let's take control over our second spice field. Now it's actually really convenient that this uh, village starts out with some manpower production because we were getting really low on that. I actually held off on constructing some buildings in this facility that, or this village that we just captured before this one uh, because we were getting very low on Plascrete. So the, probably the next thing that we're actually going to build is a Plascrete facility over here because we actually also have a bonus to that. Here. So as you can see, this will give us a 30% of this village plus rate as Solari. And if you combine that with the investment office, you get a additional two stacks. So that means that we'll actually be producing a huge amount of Solari as well as Plascrete in that village. So it's going to be very interesting. Let's pick up, pick up some additional Plascrete so we can actually build something over here. And let's see, a Plascrete facility should do just Fine. Now we get the vote on our first launch rod meeting and to be honest the troop inventories as well as the um, water regulation are not necessarily things I want. I'm going to support them anyway because remember we get a bonus in hegemony for actually uh, supported regulations being passed. So if I decline them uh, I don't think I get a bonus from them either way. I'm not going to vote for them but yeah. Let's just go for this. Now, I should be able to get the Imperial Propaganda. And this, that will actually allow me to get 30% additional authority. Um, 
in order to make sure I do get it, I'm going to vote with a fair chunk of my influence. And uh, let's see if that actually gets me voted in. Third agent up, and this one actually has an even better buff. This has a 50% additional production of every resource except for infiltration. It also gets us 20% agent recruitment speed, so our agents are going to come in really fast now. I'm actually going to move this one over here and then move this one over here, because I think by far the most important resource is authority, so might as well be producing 50% more of that. Now, meanwhile, we are also going to invade this little town over here. That will get us the Well of Reaches. And that will also give us a pretty nice boost again to our water. And then we can move on to the third field of spice over there. Now, the spice harvesters you do need to deploy. You do need to manually say that they need to be recalled. And you do need to add a crew to that uh, manually as well. So don't forget to do that, especially when you're not playing the Fremen. Because those, those will more or less take care of themselves I really like this uh, little trading hub happening over here, by the way. Uh, we have combat going on. That should be fine. Especially considering these are only ranged units. And yeah, our tank is doing its job and making sure they are too busy shooting at my tank than uh, being able to fight back. Ranged units are not very effective if they're in melee range, strangely. We have a point of interest already as well, so that will give us a boost to some science somewhere. Let's see, do we have anything else special over here? Yeah, might as well do that. It's actually going to be an economic development that's very convenient, considering that is exactly what we're going to go for next. Um, we are just in time to take control of this. Now, remember, the more zones you have, the more authority you're going to need in order to take a new one. So we are going to slow down a little bit in terms of actually getting new zones. But all in all, yeah, pretty straightforward start so far. We have the Harkonnen uh, popping up over here. So that's going to be a thing pretty soon. But so far, we uh, haven't really seen any aggression on their side so far. Now, I'm actually going to make a pretty hefty investment over here. I'm going to... Up get a new building slot which at this part of the game is quite a lot and then i'm going to build a maintenance center over here and why am i going to build that right over here hello lag uh, because this zone is apparently attached to all my other zones as well so this one this one this one and this one and of course it will also give a maintenance reduction to itself and we will definitely want to grab this zone as well considering we have plascrete over here so all in all uh, this is going to be a very effective building to place over there and quite honestly at some point we will probably also want a spice silo somewhere but um, we can don't have access to that just yet but we can build that one over here and then it will touch these two fields as well so that is definitely something to look out for. Um, however, for now, so far so good. We are getting close to our third spice field, but we'll need um, quite a bit of authority in order to be able to actually capture this one. Uh, let me check, you can tell by just clicking it and the further it's away from your base and the more villages you already have, the more expensive it will get. But not right now we will need 96 in order to do anything with that. Um, this will boost a random economic resource and you can just see that one shooting up so that's going to be really nice to have right now uh, we could actually buy some authority let's do that that's a huge boost so that will get us a little bit close to actually getting this area and then we this one is actually interesting this will be either spice or an economic development i'm once again going for that because i think the resource is just fine and the stockpile is pretty much taking care of itself so right now we're pretty much on track and we'll have a new harvester uh, soon up and running as well